hey guys so um today i'm going to start with a new topic azure iot hub uh iot hub is a lot in demand these days but uh, a lot of people are really uh, not aware about how we should use it and what is the practical implement implications of uh, this iot hub like where we can use it practically like theoretically uh, people are aware that it is a sensor device which is used to capture the data and we can uh, you know do some um, back end operations on that particular data but practically how and where we should use it uh, actually people are not aware that much so what i am going to do in this video is i am going to uh, take a practical uh, example and uh, go through the entire process of creating an iot hub um, uh, creating the uh, devices capture the data and how that data can be used uh, to uh, uh, from our uh, original device and how we can manipulate our device using that iot hub uh, in the form of a data that we are capturing so i'm going to explain entire uh, all these things on this in this video and uh, um, depending upon the response that i am get uh, i'll be getting on this particular video i'll be planning to go in detail of all these topics of iot hub which will surely surely help you out if you want to uh, use iot hub in your projects as your iot hubs especially so without wasting a lot of time let's get started so um, the example i am going to use is right here uh, so let's suppose uh, we all uh, have television have a television like everybody has it so uh, this is a television that we have and uh, this is our television and we have a service provider like for example airtel uh, or uh, tata sky or whatever it is any service provider so every service provider has the remotes with them and uh, um, what uh, i am going to do is i am uh, going to have uh, some channels subscribed like every time we have a service provider we have uh, some uh, channel packs some basic channel pack packs some premium channel pack packs okay so uh, i am going to do that implementation using iot hub and right now i am taking up a single device a single television and we'll see how we can do that so uh, uh, what i have done is i have a sensor device installed in the remote control of this particular service provider for example uh, for airtel i have an airtel remote and airtel has installed a, uh, a chip uh, or a sensor device that has the capability to capture the activities that is happening on the remote for example if you are you are selecting channel 1 so it has the the sensor device has the tendency to send that channel 1 to iot hub and iot hub has the capability to store that in it, with it within it we are going to see a practical implementation how iot hub is going to store that but i am explaining you what we are planning to do so the channel is getting stored now uh, if the user the television is a premium channel user then we then the iot hub is going to allow the user to uh, access that channel and if the plan is basic then a uh, premium channels will not be played so that is what we are going to implement now i hope the example is quite clear to you the uh, case study is quite clear to you and uh, so uh, it's a, it's very simple like uh, we are going to monitor the uh, play of channel on this device using iot hub like uh, uh we we are going to check if the user is a premium user then a particular channel will be played uh, if a user is a basic user then that particular channel will not be played simple so let's see how we can do it for that uh, for the for this for, do this for one devices and this way we are going to have a million of devices and we will going we will we can manage the uh, monitoring of all those devices using iot hub enough of uh, case studies explanation let's switch to demo and see how we can do so this is my azure portal i have the resource groups in the resource groups i have a uh, uh, iot hub demo this is a pretty basic thing that everybody can do here i am going to create a new iot hub
this is my uh, subscription the iot hub that i can i can choose any of the name iot hub one five two any random number because it has to be unique this will be the region review and create Now, uh, this, uh, this is the basic thing we can add uh, the VPNs and all those details. Uh, we can select the tiers also, standard tier is the higher one. For demonstration, we can use the basic tier, premium tier, um, the very basic information that we can have. Messages per day, all the details are mentioned here. You can go through all these things when you are creating. And I have reviewed it and I, now I'm going to do a review and create. So uh, since I already have an IoT Hub created, I'll be using that one. So uh, let's get back to that IoT Hub demo maker. This is the one that I have created. Okay. Now in IoT Hub, let's suppose uh, I have to add that sensor device um, which I have installed in the remote control. So here in the devices, I'm going to add a device here. Uh, let's suppose the device. I already have a device here. So let me delete this and let me show you how we are going to create a new device. Add device. Um, now the device name would be um, Sony or maybe Airtel 1091. Okay. Uh, this would be this. This would be the device code. Uh, we can have it anyway. Uh, any code, any name. It has to be unique within the IoT Hub. Now there will be three authentication type. That is symmetric key self-signed certificate and see a signed certificate because this device has to be authenticated before getting accessed. Uh, well, like we are going to add the connection string of this particular device. So um, the connection string uh, has to be, uh, uh, so we are going to add a, a connection string uh, of this particular device from our code to access it directly. So that connection string may have symmetric key that may be or we may have to add the uh, pfx files pfx codes or uh, if we have authenticated our device using cert, uh, self signed certificates or csi signed certificates right now to simplify the entire thing i am using symmetric symmetric key the way we use with our normal connection strings uh, so there is no parent device for this uh, device as of now so i have created a device and i am going to simply save it now I have the device added and if I see the information of this device, so uh, this is the connection string that I'll be uh, using. Now uh, after uh, creating the device, um, I would like to show you one thing. This is device twin. So device twin is basically a blueprint of the device that we have added. Like uh, right now, this is the Airtel device uh, that, I, that I have. Whenever I will establish a connection with this, it will show uh, it, uh, connected. Since um, I don't have any thumbprints installed, it is uh, giving me null here. There, these are the properties, the desired properties and the reported properties. I'll be explaining just in a moment what are the desired properties and reported properties. So desired properties are the uh, properties that we want our device to actually have and perform some action on them. For example, in our scenario, the desired property will be channel status. Let me type it here. And it is on right. Now, as you can see right now, we have version 1. Now, I'm going to save this uh, device twin. And uh, on saving this device twin, if I do a refresh, I can see that the version is updated and a data is maintained here. A metadata is maintained here, which is showing the last value of channel status and last updated version that we have. So reported properties are the properties that would be sent directly by the device. So right now I don't have an actual device, but I can uh, show you the code uh, that we are going to have in the device. And uh, uh, that code will be used to, you know, uh, you know, uh, set the status, uh, capture the uh, activities of the device that are happening. So I have a code segment present here. And don't, guys, don't worry about the code. I'll be sharing all the code in uh, my GitHub repositories and the link to the GitHub repository will be present in the description box. So I want you guys to focus on the 
the <coughs> activities that we are trying to do here. So I have a simple project here that is this one. So let me close the remaining ones. Close all but this. Don't say. Yeah, here we are. So as you can see, uh, 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 we are uh, establishing a connection with the IoT Hub the same way we do with the service per storage account and other things. This is this is the IoT Hub connection string. This is the device connection string, device ID, uh, device status and channel. All these are desired and reported properties that we have. So <coughs> let me uh, let me try to uh, re re-enter these things because uh, the connection strings <coughs> uh, so that you can, guys can see from where we exactly have to fetch it. So device connection string can, it can be fetched from, uh, so IoT Hub connection string can be fetched from here. This is the IoT Hub connection string. Let's copy this and let's paste it here in this project. This is the, and device connection string will be copied from devices. This is the device that we have, and this is the device connection string. So, the name of the device will be sorry, let me the name of the device will be this desired property will be channel status and reported property would be the channel. <coughs> init client will be simply initializing the client by uh, adding this connection string and the device twin will be printing out the device twin that we have in the code. And here we will be entering the values of the reported properties continuously. And these reported properties will be sent to the IoT hub. We have another method that can uh, take the desired property value. Uh, so basically, this method will be executed when we update the desired property on the IoT hub there. Uh, so uh, this method will be showing the device, uh, the desired property that we have. So let's run this code and see uh, what is exactly happening. So on executing this code, we have it's running Yeah, so this is the device ID, this is the tag, this is the version enabled and all the device twin details that we have. So it is asking me to enter the channel number. Uh, so let's suppose from my remote I have pressed channel number 1. So this is the channel number 1 that is sent here. And if you can see in the IoT hub, the reported property in the device twin will be Channel number one. <laughs> now, uh, let's suppose channel. Uh, uh, let's suppose right now we have a basic pack where uh, channel number one is allowed. So what I'll do is I'll update the. Uh, I'll uh, have my channel status as on because uh, this uh, is allowed. So uh, this on status will be. Uh, will uh, this on status will be uh, like a. This on status represents that the device is allowed to uh, switch on the channel and run the channel on your device. So uh, now again, I'll be entering another channel here. That is channel number <coughs> 111. This channel is uh, not allowed. Uh, this channel is basically involved in the premium list. So it is not allowed to play. So right now, I'll see in my device twin reported property, the channel has been updated to 111. And channel status is on. So uh, first of all, I will demo uh, demonstrate what is happening if the channel status is switched off. So the channel state when the channel status is off, uh, how my application will behave. So I have uh, turned my channel off. And if if I see on my device, this is captured here. It is showing me that the channel status status is uh, off now and. Uh, I can code here that if my channel status is off, my device should not play. My device should not respond. So that's how it is. Now, uh, right now, uh, we updated the channel status here manually in the device twin. Now, uh, we can have 
an azure function a separate azure uh, function or uh, a logic app or web job or whatever a scheduler kind of thing which can continuously check the channel here uh, and if the channel is not in the premium list then we can update this device twin through code also and uh, like uh, uh, this device twin uh, in the channel status here can be updated uh, through the device uh, through the uh, code also and then our activity our uh, device can respond on the desired status update so i can demonstrate that also through the code so this is the application that will be running continuously i have another application here which i'll be running uh, that is this one if i show you the code uh, what is happening on that particular application it is a very simple very basic application where we have all those details that we have uh, presented uh, we have presented previously this is the iot hub connection string this is the method that we have uh, the device name i can copy from here okay so uh, let i am going to add the code only for one particular channel right now that is 111 so if the channel is 111 i will be updating the desired property to off and if the if it is not 111 then i'll be um, setting it to on and uh, right now it is a basic console application i can make it a scheduler as well i can demonstrate it in the next video if required so uh, let me update the channel here let me uh, Let me try to rerun it and update the reported property. So the reported property here is. Let's suppose I am switching to channel number one. Now, if the channel number is one, I want my desired um, device status to be switched on, which is currently in off status. As you can see here, it is in off status. I want it to be done updated through my code. So what I'll do is I, I'll simply run this code. Ah, uh -huh, it's breaking. Why is it breaking? I have to check. Okay, it is checking. Sorry, 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 sorry. I have updated the device at the wrong place. This is the device, and this is channel status. And the reported property is channel. So if the channel is not equal to one 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 device, a channel status should be switched on. Otherwise, a channel status will be switched off. So uh, uh, since I had the reported property one, technically my channel status should be uh, switched on. so let's see okay if i check my device twin now the channel status is on and if i check my device so my device has got the report that the channel status is on and uh, i can use this to basically switch on and switch off my channel so that's all for this video guys if you like this video you can like share and subscribe my channel and uh, you can uh, put a thumbs up and let me know if i should make more videos on this particular topic this is a very good topic very advanced topic very much in use these days and this was a very basic thing that i have explained to you for one particular device uh, later on we are going to have device provisioning service iot edge and all the things explained and how we can consume this data actually uh, within the azure i am going to explain all these things uh, about uh, this particular topic in my upcoming videos so Thanks for watching the video and I hope you all like it. Thank you very much.